From frumpy to fabulous, these are the details ruining your athleisure outfits. Welcome to my channel. My name is Priska Jordan and in today's video I'm talking all about athletic wear that you're wearing from the gym to go run errands like getting groceries or whatever you have to do for the rest of your day. I have a confession. I actually don't get all dressed up every day even though I have a style channel on YouTube. The truth is that you see me at my very best when I am all dressed up for making a video, but a couple of days out of the week, I look like a curmudgeon. And I realize that I have a problem that you might have too. See, my standards for getting ready are so high. I want to try out a new solution where I combine my actual schedule, which is a lot of times going to work out, running errands, that type of thing, with how I actually want to feel that day, which is put together and feeling fresh and alert. Is this video just an excuse for me to wear my comfy athletic wear while filming a video? <laughs> no, I would never do that. Problem number one is that your outfit is mismatched, so you feel like a hot mess. How many times have you looked in the mirror and said those words to yourself? Well, I have a solution for you. It is stick to the three color rule. The three color rule is simply that you have three colors in your outfits, and one of those colors can be a pattern that incorporates the other colors, but basically stick to a color palette for your athletic wear. My color palette is pink, mauve, purple, fuchsia, black, and white. This rule helps me so much in the mornings when I wake up and go straight to the workout studio. I don't have to think about putting together a good outfit and I'm confident that after my workout, I'm still presentable to go run errands without looking sloppy or a hot mess. And sticking to a color palette has been very empowering for me over the last year that I've been working on my color palette because once you start getting selective about just your clothes in your life, you start seeing other areas where you need to be more choosy, like who is allowed to bring energy into your life, what activities are you going to do with your time. When you start getting more selective about what aligns with you, it's a very empowering thing. So start with your color palette. It's a tangible item that is easy to work on in your closet, choose the colors that you feel and look your best in. Problem number two is that your leggings aren't quite right. Either they're too long, the inseam might be too long, or the waist is too short. I personally think that the most universally flattering leggings on women are high-waisted with a long line. So for me, the inseam length is 27 inches right to above my ankle. But measure this for yourself. So you'll take your measuring tape and pull one end up to the crotch gusset of your pants and hold the other in down at your ankle and once you know your inseam measurement you can actually get your leggings tailored it costs about five dollars and it helps you look so much more chic in your athleisure because that crumpled looking look at the bottom of your pants it just never is very flattering and as a future shopping tip if you can memorize the inseam that you need then that will empower you when you go shopping because one of the retailers that i buy athletic wear from they have inseams of 23 inches, 25, 28, and I think 31. But I know that mine is 27 and I haven't had the problem with incorrect inseam length in a while. It's been really nice to just have pants that look right on me. And speaking of pants, the third problem is that you might be wearing capris. Hear me out, capris are not very flattering on anybody, but especially the curvier you are, the more it doesn't flatter your body. And I am a curvy hourglass figure, so I can attest that on me, capris look terrible. But I know that a lot of times in the summer we wanna wear capris because maybe you're not very confident in how you look in shorts anymore, but leggings or pants are just way too hot. Here's a solution, try biker shorts. Yes, biker shorts from the 80s, they have come back strong. And I was personally thinking they weren't going to look good on me until I did a try on in store and found out that if I buy the right inseam length again, then these shorts are actually flattering. And if you're thinking, uh, I'm past the age of wearing tight little shorts, I pair my biker shorts a lot of times with a baggier top. So try biker shorts, but go in store and try them on because you need to know whether you need a three inch, four inch, six inch, or 11 inch inseam. I've tried the longer and the shorter and I settled on between a four to six inch inseam. That's really my happy place when it comes to shorts. 
So I dare you to go into the store and try on biker shorts and just see how they look on you compared to capris. You might be surprised that you actually like them. Problem number four is that your socks don't match your sneakers. And this is such a small detail that draws so much attention if it's wrong. So here is an example of pink socks with black leggings and black sneakers. And you can just see how bad this looks. It looks so off. So just by swapping out those socks for black socks that match the sneakers, it is right on. But what if you have colored sneakers? Whenever I have colored sneakers, I just go on Amazon and Google the color and athletic socks. And just for about seven to $10, you're solving that problem once and for all. This sock issue is such a pet peeve of mine because it's such a little problem that really throws off your style. Your entire outfit can look good, but if your socks are screaming for attention and not in a good way, then you're letting a little detail create a big problem in your outfit. It's so easy to fix. Problem number five is that the proportions of your outfit are wrong and that makes your body look warped. So here's an example of a tight top with tight pants and tiny little shoes. And what I'm seeing from top to bottom is tiny, tiny, tiny clothes. And the tinier pieces are, the more emphasis you're putting on your curves. So what I like to do is balance out a top that is a little bit more billowy with my leggings, and that's typically what I work out in. But if I need an athleisure outfit just to run errands, I might do a tank top with some joggers. So there's some balance there as well. And while I'm still thinking about that tiny, tiny, tiny outfit, I have to address the white sneakers. Now for the last decade or so, I have owned tiny white sneakers. They were a trend and there's one that has stuck around for millennials, but this is a tip that we can learn from Gen Z. A chunkier shoe actually is more flattering for the body. And it has the same effect as a boot cut jean. When you have a boot cut jean, it balances the curvature of the hips, creating a sort of hourglass just in the bottom half. It creates balance. But the smaller your shoe, the larger your hips look in contrast. So take it from the Gen Zers and try a chunky shoe. This is another one that I don't wanna hear what you have to say until you've tried it on in store because I was so against chunky shoes until I tried them on, stepped back and looked in the mirror and realized this is actually way more flattering on me. And before we move on from the proportions topic, let's talk about the rule of thirds with leggings outfits. This is another reason why I recommend a high waist and a long properly fitting inseam on you. It's because it helps you to apply the rule of thirds quickly, which states that a outfit that is broken up vertically in thirds is more pleasing to the eye than an outfit that is broken up in halves. So a lot of times what I see is for women who feel self-conscious about their midsection, maybe you've gained a little weight, you've had a baby, something along those lines, and you just feel like you're self-conscious about that. What I see is that women just take their shirt and tug it down and so it's cutting them off at the widest part of their hips. And what that's actually doing is making you look wider. But if you follow the rule of thirds, we can actually flatter your figure. And I recommend like Spanx leggings, for example, that have that nice tight waistband and that are high-waisted and a longer length that is going to create the bottom two thirds of your outfit. The top one third will be your top. Just make sure not to tug it down so that the bottom seam is going straight across the widest part of your hips. Now, if that sounds outside of your comfort zone, then another thing you can do is just have a more billowy top that is tunic length. So the top half of your outfit is the two thirds and the bottom one third is your leggings. Try this out next time you're creating a leisure outfit and let me know how it goes. Problem number six is that your clothes are ratty and that makes you feel yucky in them. Like you're wearing your yard work clothes to work out in and of course you don't feel your best when you do that. And there might be two reasons for this. Number one is that you do have cute athletic wear but you're saving your good clothes for later. Stop doing that. 
start showing up for the day that you want to have instead of how you're feeling in the moment. Especially if you're going to work out in the mornings, a lot of times when we wake up, we're just not feeling our best and brightest for the day, but dress the way you want to feel. I've been working out my entire life and whenever I put on one of those ratty old outfits, I just don't perform as well. I don't show up, I don't feel as confident. And it's interesting how just an outfit can change the way you feel. But another thing that changes how you feel is your posture. I made a whole video on posture tips for body confidence, and I based it off of Amy Cuddy's book, Presence, and that is talking about power posing to get yourself to feel the way that you want to feel. It is so empowering when you take control of your day and you stop letting your mood in one moment dictate how you're going to feel for the rest of the day. And that's part of getting dressed as well is that you're telling yourself how you want to feel for the rest of the day. So that's one reason why you might be wearing ratty clothes as athleisure. And the other one is that you just don't have anything nice in athletic wear or lounge wear. If all of your good clothes are dressy, but you're not dressy that often, then you're putting your budget in your closet towards an ideal lifestyle that doesn't match your actual lifestyle. Instead, think about how much time you're spending in athletic wear and lounge wear every week and carve out part of your clothing budget towards that so that you can feel your best regardless of what activity you're working on that day. And one last action step to take is it might be time to declutter those ratty clothes, those things that you don't feel very good in. It doesn't make any sense to put on things that make you feel worse. So think about going through your closet and getting rid of any pieces that have holes, rips, stains. So you don't have that option of wearing something that makes you feel worse. Instead, your clothes are empowering you to Feel your best and be your best on a daily basis. Problem number seven is that your outfit is basic. In the words of one of my actual friends, you're basic. It's a human insult. It's devastating. You're devastated right now. We all have a neutral color that we overwear when we don't feel good or don't feel like putting together an outfit. And the problem with neutrals is that they don't show any type of personality. So if I'm wearing an all black workout outfit, you can tell that I'm just trying to blend into the background that day. And it's probably not going to be a day when I speak up and show up as my best self. So instead, we wanna add a hero piece to outfits and that might be a hat, a jewelry piece that brings a little bit of attention and sparkle, a pattern, or a signature color. By injecting a hero piece into your athleisure outfit, it's going to help you show up as your best and boldest self and seize the opportunities that are presented to you in that day. Problem number eight with athleisure wear is that your outfit might be bulky and so you feel frumpy. And this happens when you wear all baggy clothing from top to bottom. So instead, I like to wear either a baggy top, especially in the winter if I'm wearing a lot of layers, and balance that out with my leggings and some chicer shoes. I've been wearing my Tory Burch sneakers that I bought for my birthday so much over the last few weeks, and I absolutely love them. They bring personality, they're a hero piece, and they help to create balance in the outfit. I have an oversized top, some leggings, and a chunky shoe, and it creates such a nice, good balance within the outfit. This way I'm still comfortable for working from home or running errands, but I still feel really cute and chic. Another problem you might be having with your outfits is that you have this random outerwear that doesn't actually go with it and you think, it's fine, I'm just wearing it into the gym and then I'm gonna take it off and then my outfit makes sense. But most of the time that you're wearing that outfit, you're probably actually wearing the outerwear. So make sure that you have some outerwear pieces that go with your athleisure. Now the way I do this is by sticking to a color palette, but sometimes I'll even take a nicer jacket or like a coat if it's cold out and pair it over my outfit. I just make sure that there's some type of thematic cohesion in the colors, even if it's not my exact color palette. This allows me to play around a little bit more and be creative with these outfits and still look really put together. So make sure that you're wearing an outerwear piece that actually goes with the outfit you have on, even with athleisure. 
Problem number 10, let me know if this is something that you've thought. My outfit is bland, especially in January. It's easy to think a lot of outfits are bland. We've lost the beautiful bright colors of fall. We've lost the glitter and sparkle of the holidays. And what we're left with a lot of times is black and white outfits. One of the ways that I add some shine and texture into an athleisure outfit, which sometimes can be hard to do, is with makeup. I like to put on a little bit of highlighter or lip gloss or lipstick just to add a little bit more pop of color and life to my face and that is going to make that whole outfit look a lot better. And that is all 10 problems and solutions for creating athleisure outfits that still look chic. If you haven't done this yet, you need to subscribe to my channel to see my videos on looking and feeling more confident in your clothes. And here is a video that I would recommend for you next. It is posture fixes for body confidence. I will see you next week with a brand new video. Until then, take care.